Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider some simple examples of groups. And these examples are quite simple and not very representative of the full diversity of groups. But that's how we have to start. Okay, so the first example I'm going to consider is R star. This means non-zero roots. So the star thing up here typically denotes non-zero things. Have you seen this notation? No. Okay, well, this is the first time. So R star non-zero roots under multiplication with identity element 1 and where the inverse operation is just the usual inverse, multiplicative inverse for a real number. Okay. Do you see why we have to do make do with non-zero real numbers? Zero doesn't have a multiplicative inverse. Yes, exactly. Okay. Do you think this is a group? Well, you go over the checklist mentally. Is it associative? Yes. Is one an identity element? Yes. Is the is the is this inverse operation, the reciprocal, the 1 over x operation, else that uh, multiplicative inverse mm -hmm. quad multiplication? Yes. Yes. Okay, so yes, it's the group. It's a group. Okay, what about the integers under addition with identity element 0 and, and the inverse operation is just the negative? Is that a... Is that a group? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a group. What about the rational numbers, non-zero rational numbers, under multiplication with 1 as the identity and the usual multiplicative inverse? Is that a group? Yes. Okay. Uh, so the point with, with the first and the third example, the relation is this one is sort of living inside this. Okay? This group lives inside that group. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see a term for that. That's what we should be calling subgroup. So a bit later we'll see that. But for now, let's, let's just continue. Let's take some examples which are not quite groups. So the non-negative integers under addition, is that a group? No. Why not? Uh, Non-negative integers. Yeah, so like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, and mm -hmm. you're adding. Is that a group under addition? But well, it is associative. It's associative. There's well, an identity element. Zero. That's zero. Do you yeah. have additive inverses? Additive inverse. In this set? Mm -hmm. So, so if you take the element... No, that will be they'll go outside going to the, the positive. So, well, they're already positive. Non-negative means... Oh, that will go into negative. Go into negative. Mm -hmm. So, no inverses. That's the problem, right? Mm -hmm. Or rather, well, zero does have an inverse, but no inverses in general. Like, everything cannot be inverted. So, uh, not a group. Okay, what about non-zero integers under multiplication? No. Well, is it associative? It is associative. Yes, it's, so it's closed under multiplication, first mm -hmm. of all. You should actually check this. I didn't say it explicitly, but you should check to begin with that, that your operation is well-defined. It's a well-defined binary operation, mm -hmm. right? So it's, they sense things in the set. So then that's true. Mm -hmm. Product of non-zero integers is non-zero. Mm -hmm. So it's associative and it has an identity element, one. Mm -hmm. So what's the problem? Well, the the multiplicative multi inverse may not be integers. Yeah. If, uh, so no inverses, ex mm -hmm. except for 1 and minus 1. Mm -hmm. All other elements are not invocable. Okay, just like here it was except 0. Like except the element 0, everything was not invocable. Here, except 1 and minus 1, everything is not invocable. So not a group. What about the third example? No. Why not? It doesn't, you didn't exclude 0. Okay, no inverse for 0. But if you did exclude 0, it would be a group. So these are some rather simple examples. What What's one? Well, these are non-examples. These three are some simple examples. They are all abelian groups. What do I mean by that? They are also commutative. The group operation is commutative. There are examples of non-abelian groups. In fact, the whole point of group theory is sort of to do stuff for non-abelian groups because abelian group theory is, is much easier than group theory. 
there's a lot fewer rebellion groups. Okay, so since uh, you've seen matrices, I'll take one example of uh, matrices. Okay. So consider, let's call this group. By the way, uh, if those of you are seeing this for the first time, you don't have to look, uh, go on to this part. This is just an example of a non invariant thing for people who have seen matrices. Is the 2 by 2 matrices where the entries are real numbers and the determinant is non-zero. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now I'm claiming that this is a group under multiplication, under matrix multiplication. Do you see that? Yes. Why? Uh, well, you have to first check that when you multiply two things here, you do get something in here. Why is that true? So it's a uh, Product of two two by two matrices is a two by two matrix. But you also have to check that when you take the product, this condition is satisfied with the product as well. Uh -huh. What do you know about determinants and products? The determinant of a product is the product of the determinants. Yes. So it's closed under multiplication. So multiplication is well defined mm -hmm. because. The determinant of a product is a product of the determinant. So if you have two things with non-zero determinants, then the product also has non-zero determinant. Let's try it briefly. But yeah, that, that's the idea. What about... Uh, it is associative. Well, I should just write this is the determinant. It's associative. Mm -hmm. You can actually check matrix multiplication in general is associative. What should the identity element be? Two by two identity matrix. What's that? One with one on diagonal, zero otherwise. Okay, and the inverse operation? Well, that's a little hard to see. Let me see if I can get this. It's going to be. 1 over AD minus B. So this will sort of multiply each of the entries. Mm -hmm. D, negative B, negative B, right? This, the 1, 2 entry is negative B. How do you get that? That's, that's the inverse. And then the 1... Do you, do you memorize it? Yeah, I remembered it. Yeah, that's negative C and A. Okay, good. And you can check. If you multiply this, you get AD minus BC mm -hmm. over AD minus BC, that right. means 1. Mm -hmm. Minus AB plus BA, that means 0. CD minus DC, that's 0. And minus, uh, where are we? Minus, minus CD C plus yeah. AD. So that's again uh, AD minus BC divided by AD minus BC gives you 1. And you can check the multiplication the other way around, also gives you the identity. You know, so you have to check both ways. Okay, and so this actually we have checked that this gives you a group. What did we use about the real numbers? What facts did we use about the real numbers? Well, we used that you can multiply and add real numbers. Mm. Okay, that's what we used in order to do, I guess. Uh, and we also used that if you have two non zero real numbers, the product is non zero. And for the last one, for the inverses, we actually had to invert this number 80 minus BC. Okay. So, we basically used that the real numbers form what is called a field. So, you can actually construct, you know what a field is? Yeah. You can actually, for any field, you can construct GL2 of that field and get a group. Okay. Uh, you can actually do it even for any commutative ring, but then the definition will be a little different. You have to take the determinant. To be in to be an invertible element over the ring, so it's a little more complicated. You can also replace two by higher numbers. Okay, if you take some bigger number, then multiplication still be defined as it is. The formula for the inverse would be complicated, mm -hmm. but you can actually sort of show without calculating a formula that that anything with 
with non-zero determinant is in fact invertible. Invertible. Yeah. So you could you could sort of show that uh, abstractly without actually computing an inverse, but you could also compute an inverse explicitly. Uh, here's a procedure for doing that. And what is it? Why is this non-abelian? Well, you have to basically come up with two matrices whose uh, products one way is not the same as the product the other way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you could, I guess, you could take these two matrices and you could multiply them and check that you don't get the same product both ways. So, if you multiply them, this multiplied by this, you'll get what will you get? Uh, well, one so, two zero one one zero two. Well, one times one plus one times one. Mm -hmm. If you multiply this, will you get two? Two. One. 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 This one, you'll have uh, one, one times one. one plus, so you'll get one. Mm -hmm. Then you'll have. Uh, like, what are we doing? So, so we're one. Doing one. Another one. Yeah. This one will also Another be one. one, yeah. And then two. Yeah, so the two came. Okay, so the two. So this is not abelian. So this is an example of a non-abelian. This is actually a more fundamental of thinking of why you get non-abelian groups, but that, that's another day. 